Hello, dear friends of human spaceflight. What? What's going on now? Why do we have to see your face again? It was so nice not having to see your face. And now we have to see your face again. What's going on? And why are you so old? Why is your hair so gray? Questions over questions, right? Well, there's a reason why I'm talking to you today. It's, it's been a while since we've done that. And I want to talk to you about the future of this channel. The observant among you might have noticed that I wasn't extremely motivated anymore for this channel in the last months and I want to explain to you why this happened and what we are going to do about this in the future uh, and how we are going to overcome this crisis for this channel and I have a really nice proposition to make and I hope you will like it and not absolutely hate it and not absolutely hate me also for that. So the people among you who have been watching this channel for a longer time might remember that when we started this channel, we were talking about weird topics. We, we thought, okay, let's start a YouTube channel and we are interested in technology. We are interested in, in movies. We are interested in, in science fiction. So the channel was called Sci-Fi Instinct. Then we realized nobody's watching our videos, like five people or something. Okay, the reason was also that our quality was complete crap and we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and then slowly the channel transformed to spaceflight because uh, I was interested in those things that were happening during that time. It was the early days of uh, SpaceX uh, Starship, Boca Chica. It was um, the time when, when SpaceX made huge advances in human spaceflight. And I was like, man, this is some fascinating stuff. And I was watching other space channels at the time because I wanted to know what was going on. And Jisha and me were thinking like, why not do a space channel with comedic elements? You know, there's all, all the space channels were so serious. All the space channels were like, mm, wow, super correct, you know, mm, let's not offend anyone. Let's be super friendly all the time. So then we came up with this idea to do a comedic space channel. And um, that's how this concept of To The Future was born, where Jishan and me were like uh, in front of the camera and uh, presenting all the latest stuff and news that was happening in the space flight industry with integrating some unnecessarily at times over the top stupid jokes, because that was basically the formula of the channel. So we were a bit over the top and did some, um, some stupid jokes and so on. Um, and the principle of this channel was to openly talk about all the topics that other channels would not dare to mention. For example, corruption in the spaceflight industry, the lobbying that was going on behind the scenes with Boeing, Lockheed and the old aerospace companies. And of course, also to openly talk about space politics. That's very fascinating, you know, the whole constellation with Russia and China and how a new space race is evolving. So these topics, uh, I found them very fascinating and I thought there was a need to address these things. And uh, it was a fun time. We had, we had a great time doing this for a while. Because what happened then? So basically two things happened. The first thing that happened was that we felt kind of like slaves to the YouTube algorithm. So anyone who knows a bit about the YouTube algorithm, how YouTube works, um, it's basically you have to find a niche, right? So in our case, a space channel. And if you are now in that niche, you have basically almost no chance of getting out of that niche and exploring other interesting topics and other interesting ideas that you yourself might find extremely fascinating. So what happened was that every time I wanted to explore different topics, because you know, I'm interested in a whole variety of topics, like um, everything that has to do with space, not only human space flight, but everything that has to do with space, I find extremely fascinating. So every time I wanted to explore these different topics, um, like we had no chance because the algorithm would not promote that kind of stuff. And so basically no one watched it, like absolutely no one. These videos had like, the views of these videos were completely tanking. But every time when we did something about Starship, about SLS, you know, bashing SLS, um, talking about the whole Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk drama, you know, all the lawsuits against SpaceX by Blue Origin, 
Every time we talked about these kind of things, the views were quite high. So a phenomenon developed that basically forced us to always talk about the same topics or very similar topics. Starship here, Starship there, what happened with Starship, new Starship update, um, human landing system, Starship, then SLS delays, right? Um, the, whole, the whole thing with SLS and Artemis um, and then uh, Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos and the whole dynamics. So it was quite narrow and I started at some point feeling a bit constrained. I, I started feeling constrained by the YouTube algorithm, by what the YouTube algorithm allowed us to creatively explore. Because some of you might also remember that we talked about all kinds of disruptive technologies, right? Especially a lot about electric cars or EV tolls or even more outlandish concepts. But the problem was that every time we tried to do this, the YouTube algorithm would completely destroy us. Like almost nobody was watching those videos. So at some point we were thinking like, why are we doing these videos when almost nobody's watching them? And when we talk about Starship, then like 10 times as many people are watching, like five or 10 times as many, no exaggeration. That's how crazy the difference was. So we became a bit demotivated to talk about these topics, knowing that not many people would watch it. So what then happened? We felt kind of like um, that YouTube is limiting our creative freedom. We felt a bit like constrained uh, in that we always have to do the same topics and always explore the same topics without any possibility of creative freedom. So it became kind of like, I don't know, we felt like hamsters in the hamster wheel, you know? We felt like hamster in the hamster wheel, just like running in the hamster wheel all the time. We have to pump out a video. We have to pump out a video about Elon Musk, about Jeff Bezos, about SpaceX Starship, and then again about Jeff Bezos, and again about Elon Musk's tweet about this or that Starship update, and again. And you know, it felt a bit tiring. It felt a bit like we're repeating the same and same stuff over and over again. And I was working in an office. I had a regular office job before starting YouTube. And I felt like, hey, I'm doing YouTube now. I could do creative things, but I'm like again in this hamster wheel where I was before when I still had an office job. So what's even the point of doing YouTube if I'm again in this stupid hamster wheel, right? Um, doesn't make a lot of sense. So that was the first part of the problem. Limitation of creative freedom imposed upon us by the YouTube algorithm. And the second thing that was really a problem for us was that these spaceflight news are having an extremely short half-life. So you bring out a space news and three days later, no one is interested in anymore in it. So, so you make a video, you put in all this effort, all this time, and a few days later, one week later, it's old news. No one is, no one is interested anymore into this kind of stuff, right? It's like, oh, that's old news. So you make the videos, they are watched like a few days, and then basically a short time later, no one is interested anymore in it because the next news has happened. So you're not only confined by the YouTube algorithm in your creativity, but you also are chasing news. So you are basically a guy that chases news. So basically, Elon Musk tweeted something at 4 a.m. in the morning. I have to make a video about it. Jeff Bezos uh, sued uh, SpaceX for the hundredth time. I have to make a video about it. And you have to be fast. You have to make a video very fast because two or three days later, no one is interested anymore in that topic. It's basically old news. So because Jishan and me were doing everything on our own, it was kind of a hobby project. Um, we felt a bit stressed out, you know? So it was like, okay, well, uh, Elon has tweeted something. We have to immediately make a video. So we went somewhere at a restaurant, we ate something and then like, oh shit, Elon tweeted something. We have to make a video. We are on vacation and Jeff Bezos decides to sue SpaceX for the 500th time. We have to be fast and instantly make a video about it. So, you know, when we started YouTube, we had a bit of a naivete. We didn't know how YouTube worked. We didn't know anything about YouTube, nothing at all. Um, and we just wanted to make fun videos. So we didn't know about the realities of being a YouTuber. Let's put it like this. Uh, you know, there's like uh, the fantasy of how you think things are going to be and then the reality. And 
you know, this basically this limitation of creativity where every time when I wanted to explore other topics like aliens or dark matter, dark energy, expansion of the universe, a bit more weird topics, like no one was interested in it. So my creative freedom was, I felt very, very limited. And then we felt like we are chasing news all the time. So we are like, our life is being basically influenced by what Elon Musk is tweeting at 4 a.m. in the morning or whatever. So, you know, it, it was not a nice feeling. We started not enjoying the process anymore at some point. We started feeling like this is getting annoying. You know, this is this is like this is not fun anymore. But we felt like if we would stop now, we would disappoint the viewers because basically you were so friendly. The viewers of this channel really supported us. We, we got to know a lot of amazing people. We got a lot of support by you and I sincerely want to thank you for that. Many people donated to us. Um, I really want to thank all the amazing viewers that supported and helped this channel. And we thought like, oh man, we cannot stop because we basically have an obligation to continue. So what was our solution? What did we do about a year ago? So basically we stopped doing the videos together and we just did voice over recordings. Uh, first, we did it together, Jishran and me, a few videos, but then we realized it was faster if I just record the videos. We were thinking like, let's streamline the process. Maybe then we will have more fun if we don't have to invest so much time, right? Because as you can imagine, standing in front of the camera, um, talking into the camera, uh, Jishran and me together, this was a lot more work than just doing a voiceover recording. This required a factor at least two times more working hours than doing only the voiceover recording. So this was a lot more effort, of course. So we thought, okay, let's just continue doing the voiceover recording in order to save the channel. That we then did. So then the change came and I was just doing the voiceover recordings. And that also went well for a while, but the problem remained, even though now the the thing with running after the news was a bit better, the problem still remained the limitation of exploring many different topics, you know, that limitation, I still felt confined. And so my fun doing this further declined more and more. I tried to like fight against this, you know, but nah, there was this feeling that what I'm doing is like feeling forced, you know, it's feeling forced. So then what happened basically at some point, because I felt my creative freedom is limited, I started exploring the idea to start other YouTube channels. And I'm interested in many, many different topics. I do a lot of trading and investing with cryptocurrencies. I read a lot of books. I'm interested in history, especially in the Roman Empire. I'm absolutely like a total nerd for the Roman Empire. Then I also play guitar. I'm, I thought about doing a guitar channel. I don't know, I also go to the gym, I I play PC games, I'm a gamer, I play a lot of PC games, I, I thought about starting a gaming channel, but what happened is that um, the crypto channel and uh, the history channel won, basically. I just started doing some crypto videos and some videos about the Roman Empire, especially the late Roman Empire and how the Roman Empire fell, because I was always extremely fascinated by how civilizations fall how, how does that happen so I, I started just producing some videos and i realized that the crypto channel is also not so much for me because basically it's also again news based and then i'm again very confined and very much chasing the news so oh bitcoin has dumped by five percent i have to make a video about it oh this coin has pumped i have to make a video about it so the same problem as with the space channel so what happened is that it crystallized in the last three or four months that basically the channel about Roman history was the channel where I had the most fun because not only did I not have to chase the news anymore because obviously the Western Roman Empire collapsed 1500 years ago. So basically there's obviously not so much news coming out anymore. So everything already happened apart from maybe some new archeological discoveries here and there. And therefore I was not forced to chase the news anymore. You know, I could do videos whenever I wanted. And that's something I really appreciate. Like personal freedom is something that is very important to me. I want to be, you know, I want to be free. I, I, I don't want to be um, a slave to anyone. You know, I have this 
desire for freedom may be a bit childish, but that's just my personal character. I have this desire to do stuff that where I enjoy a lot of personal freedom. So the channel about the late Roman Empire basically gave me a lot of freedom because I could explore all the different topics that I wanted about the Roman Empire. And then there are like thousands of different things that I find fascinating from, I don't know, engineering of the Roman Empire, technologies that the Romans used, to how did the Roman Empire collapse, how, what exactly did happen. And then you have like also the Eastern Roman Empire, another history that lasts thousand years longer. So I felt it gives me a lot more creative freedom. And also there was not the problem of the constant news. I didn't have to chase news anymore, right? So basically that channel started to be a lot more fun for me. And I started that channel in early October. So it's still not, not too old, four and a half months old. Um, but I felt like, wow, this channel allows me to be much more creative and gives me much more personal freedom. I can upload a video whenever I want. I don't have to chase uh, Elon Musk tweeting something. I don't have to chase some news coming out all the time. So it was much more fun for me, you know? And that's why basically it crystallized now that um, this channel is more fun. And maybe that's a bit egoistic. And I really like to apologize for that, especially to our older viewers. Uh, that basically I have more fun now with the history channel and I don't want to pretend that I have fun with the space channel because it's insincere and uh, you people are intelligent you know the viewers of space channels are on average pretty intelligent people I would say so you can feel you can hear that I'm not super motivated anymore and that basically then comes off as insincere but I want to stay true to myself. When I do something, I want to stay true to myself and I want to do stuff where I really have fun because I think YouTube is driven by emotion and people will realize, they are not stupid, they will realize if someone is really doing it because he or she is interested in that and has a lot of fun doing it or is just kind of a business. It's like, okay, I'm doing this for money or something. And basically now the channel about Roman history has kind of become my main channel uh, because I have this passion, because I have fun doing it, because YouTube is not constraining me so much there as with the space channel. Um, I can talk about hundreds or thousands of different topics, whereas on the space channel it was only revolving about um, yeah SLS, uh, Blue Origin, SpaceX and Artemis program. So that it was very confined. So basically now the Roman channel has become my main channel and I have a lot of fun doing it. And um, unfortunately, I don't have the time to keep up the two channels. So I tried to first solve this problem by hiring Raul, Raul Marquina. He was doing the editing and I noticed I was still putting in too much time um, because the Rome channel is really requiring a lot of attention and a lot of time. So basically then a friend of mine, whom I know from the Total Space Network, started helping me um, writing the scripts. And I tried to keep the channel alive. It was basically, okay, I, I tried to keep the channel alive in order not to disappoint people. But unfortunately, I still didn't have enough fun to continue this, to continue doing this. And it felt insincere and um, yeah, the views also went down because I think people realized that I'm not so enthusiastic anymore about it. You know, I'm not so enthusiastic anymore. So yeah, it felt a bit insincere. And what we were thinking, so the people from Total Space, the awesome people from the Total Space Network uh, and uh, Zabol Shiare and me, we were thinking about Okay, I'm not so motivated anymore, but we don't want to let the channel die, right? Because the alternative would have been to just stop the channel. I will not upload anything onto the future anymore. And I will just continue with the channel about Roman history. So Zabolsch had the idea, hey, why not continue it in some form uh, while it's being kept alive by someone else? And this will basically be the idea that the awesome people from the Total Space Network, with whom we had the honor of making a few videos in the past. We had an awesome collaboration called uh, Humans in Space. It was awesome doing this. 
So what is going to happen now is basically that this channel will be taken over by the Total Space Network. I'm, I'm giving them the channel and they will continue making videos. Um, but it's important, of course, that the videos, that the spirit of the videos is continued. So uh, that not suddenly the, the channel is becoming super PC and super friendly and suddenly the space launch system is awesome and, and Starship is a scam or something. You know, there are all these idiots on YouTube doing this, these kinds of videos like Elon Musk is an idiot. Okay, he is sometimes not the friendliest person, like, but like these narratives, you know, like Elon Musk is either the best, he never does any mistake or Elon Musk is the worst everything he does is is bad and he's like a complete idiot so you know these extremes uh, always these extreme views it's a bit childish but it's of course important that the spirit of this channel goes on and the channel doesn't become pc so we still need to continue to talk about corruption and lobbying in the space flight industry and what's going on behind the scenes and you know the delays with sls and the attempts to shut down starship you know, the political maneuvering to hinder progress of Starship and and to promote companies with inefficient products like Boeing, Lockheed and so on, who waste billions of taxpayer dollars and still have nothing to show for. So it's important to continue talking about these topics. And the Total Space Network and I made totally sure that this is continuing to be the case. And you can expect some really good videos. They are really awesome. They are talented people at Total Space Network like Rich LB and Aaron. They are doing a really awesome job and they understand um, how this channel works and they understand the topics of this channel here. And Zabol Shiare will be writing the scripts. Um, he has written the last five or six scripts already for To The Future. So if you watch the last five or six videos, um, he has written the scripts already. And the narration will be done by Sam. He's a really cool guy. Um, he has a really good voice, much better than my stupid voice, but he doesn't have my accent and everything. So uh, it will be pretty awesome. And he's really enthusiastic about it. And I think he will do an amazing job. He's really also very interested in space flight. So he's not like, okay, I'm just yeah, you know, like doing the narration for money or something like that. But He's also really interested in that kind of stuff. So I think the channel will continue to do amazing things. And I really hope that you will continue to watch this channel, even though basically the channel is now has, even though the channel now has transformed quite a lot from the early days, I can understand people, of course, who are upset and angry. And I really apologize. I'm really sorry about that. I really wanted to continue. I really tried my best. I tried for over a year basically to like keep the motivation going and keep uh, spinning the hamster wheel and keep chasing the news and make the videos on time. But I just found that I didn't enjoy it enough and Chishuan also not. If she would have enjoyed it a lot, she maybe might have motivated me, but she is very similar to me. And so we both felt the same way. And in the future, who knows? I'm not saying that this is it. Uh, I will never do any appearance anymore on the Space Channel because I will still watch all the other Space Channels like What About It or Space Eccentric, Marcus House and all these awesome channels. Uh, I will still watch them because I want to see the progress. I'm super optimistic and hyped about the future of humanity. I, th I think uh, the future of humanity is looking pretty bright, even though some negative people want to make us believe that everything is bad. And I'm not convinced that this will happen. I'm super optimistic about the future and uh, the channel will reflect that. And I hope in the future that Jishu and me will come back in some form. Uh, I cannot promise it. I cannot say when this will happen or if this will happen, but I will try my best that in the future I manage a way to streamline the processes for all those different topics which I'm interested in and, and that I find a way to have a successful channel about Roman history, maybe also the crypto channel. I want to maybe pick it up again, who knows, in some form and also the space channel. But for that, I need a really streamlined process and um, I need to come up with some ideas. And this might happen at some point in the future. However, I cannot guarantee it, but I will try my best, of course. Until then, 
Of course, I would be extremely happy to welcome you on the History Channel, Majorianus, dedicated to the late Western Roman Emperor Majorian, whom I admire a lot. He was a true hero. Um, and I would be happy to welcome you on the Roman History Channel. The channel is certainly different from To the Future, but maybe you will find it interesting and I would be happy to welcome you there. So, yeah, that's, that's everything I have to say from my side. I would like to apologize again that it went this way, that uh, history went this way. I, I wish I would be different and I wish I wouldn't have this uh, desire for extreme creative freedom and this um, desire for freedom in general, like not liking to be constrained by the mighty YouTube algorithm. But I, I hope you can understand my reasoning a bit. And I would like to again thank all the viewers who watched this channel for such a long time and all the amazing people we got to know and all the amazing people that supported this channel and even donated to us via PayPal. You guys are awesome. So thank you very much again. I hope uh, we're not letting you down too much, but I hope you can also understand the reasoning behind this uh, decision a bit and maybe in time you will be able to forgive me and Chishuan for kind of like um, not continuing this channel as you knew it but it will always continue in some form and thanks to the amazing people as i said from the total space network the channel can continue pumping out the classic videos like bashing sls you know talking about the whole Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos drama, talking about corruption in the spaceflight industry, lobbying in the spaceflight industry, about the Artemis program, about the capabilities of Starship, what's happening with Starship, when will we have our first moon and Mars space and all these amazing things about space politics and all these fascinating topics that are worth exploring. So then, friends of human spaceflight, I hope you are not too sad now. I wish you all the best. And Jishuan, of course, also wishes you all the best. And I think she has some last remarks as a nice parting gift, of course, because you might remember that Jishuan would get angry sometimes quite easily. And when this happened, it was quite dangerous. And she would like to say also a few last words. And also in the end, I would like to end the video with some funny Hulk scenes from our old videos. So then, friends of human spaceflight, the future is looking bright for space exploration. Jishan and me wish you all the best and on to the future! So thank you so much for watching us again and we really appreciate it. And aren't you a bit angry that we stop? That, uh, that we don't continue making videos? Aren't you a bit angry about this? Hulk! 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 Yeah. <laughs>